Hi, I'm Keely, also known as Kelly. And I'm Feely, also known as Alex. Welcome to our corner of the Shire, where we will show you how to bring Middle Earth into your daily life to keep you a, a happy, happy hobbit. hobbit. I'm out wandering the Shire, looking for blackberries. Why? Because when I was off visiting Bard, Philly made these delicious brownies with a ganache on them. And she got the recipe from Bilbo himself. Now, Bilbo's coming over later today, and I wanted to repay the favor by making Bilbo some blackberry tarts. I thought that, um, you know, I could kind of like impress him and yeah, so I'm out picking blackberries, and as you can see, I'm in a slightly better outfit, slightly safer than I was in our blackberry picking episode. I've still got a few scratches and getting a few pokes, but that's, that's to be expected, comes with the territory. So it's kind of slim pickings here. It's a little early in the season. It's the 1st of September, so it's a little early in the season for some of the blackberries. Um, other ones seem to already be shriveled. So I'm just gonna see what I can get. You know, it's always, it's, it's not just as simple as just picking berries. It's gotta go to these great lengths and gymnastics. And, you know, when I'm baking, I like to sometimes get berries like this. See how they're not perfectly ripe yet? That's because these berries will be a little bit more tart and they'll give you, they'll give you more flavor. Another thing I find with these, at least California blackberries, these are basically dry farmed berries. And by that, it means they're not being watered. And when they're not being watered, the flavor, the berries are smaller, as you can see, but the flavor is that much more potent and it's delicious. When I've tried blackberries from the store, I've always been really confused and not known, are they even the same thing? Cause they taste so watery. And ironically, when I was in Ireland, the hedgerows are covered in brambles and some of the berries were getting ripe. So I tried one and it was so gross, I spit it out. And I think it's just, you know, the same thing that those berries are basically being watered because it rains almost every day there. See if we can find a few more. Just always gotta be careful because see that there? Might look like a berry bush, but that's actually poison oak growing in amongst the berries. So you gotta keep a weather eye out. At least to make sure the fire. I kind of already combed these bushes, and I need at least four cups to make the recipe. This is it, four cups. But luckily, I have some frozen. So. As you'll remember in our blackberry episode, I showed you how to freeze them, and this is just the type of occasion where you might use those berries. You think that there might be enough because you're driving by and you look out the window and you go, oh, I see lots of ripe ones, but you don't take into account some of those are overripe and shriveled and others might be just unreachable or sitting around poison oak or Valar forbid have touched poison oak. So you just, you have to be careful. Um, Unfortunately for today, I think this is going to be our haul. I mean, see most of the berries are still either this, like this bunch already was picked and ripened or the rest just, they aren't ready yet. So we'll, we'll see what we can do with what we have. Now we're back inside the hobbit hole and this is going to be a little rushed so I'm not going to have time to do the traditional for this episode or for this recipe you will need speech but this is actually pretty simple so you're in luck and as always I'll put the recipe in the description. These are about four cups of blackberries that I unthawed by placing the bag that the frozen berries were stored in into a bowl of warm water and I let them sit for a few hours. Um, as you can see, they're quite juicy. 
And to that, I'm going to add my pitiful amount of berries that I was able to pick. All right, there we go. So there's at least some fresh berry in there. My shadow's kind of blocking it. Very juicy. To that, I am going to add two thirds cups of sugar with one quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. Sprinkle it on. Then I'm also going to add one quarter cup of flour. This is just to help thicken it and absorb some of the extra moisture. And another thing I'm going to add is this substance called instant, instant clear gel, which helps pies set up. And you can use quick cooking tapioca or other substances such as that. But um, I got this from King Arthur Flour. I love um, some of the baking accessories and specialty ingredients like that that they have. So that's where this came from. I'm just gonna put that in and mix it all up. So you just mainly want to make sure that the berries are as coated as possible and that all of the flour and sugar are absorbed, which is going pretty well. And then I'm going to let that sit while I make the pie crust. And to make the pie crust, I'm going to attempt a cheat. All right, folks, you remember me in the pumpkin pie episode? It's my old frenemy, the food processor. I've decided that um, I'm gonna make this pie crust using it because one thing I really hate about making pie crust is mashing in the cold butter or lard or whatever you're using. But I'm using um, one and a half sticks, which is one and a quarter? No, which is... Oh, three-fourths of a cup. Excuse me. Three-fourths of a cup of butter. Uh, and I'm just going to put that into the food processor along with um, something I sifted off camera, which is two and a half cups of flour mixed with one and a quarter teaspoons of salt. So the point is to just get the butter as mixed in as possible until the dough starts to become um, almost like sand or like brown sugar. So then when you start to work with it, it will come together really easily. To that, I'm also going to add six tablespoons of ice water. You know, in Happy Hob, apparently we really melt our butter. And we really freeze our ice. This, this whole cup was frozen, so it's very icy ice water. Um, I'm going to put in, I'll put in half the tablespoons now, about, okay, that makes up about one, two, and you want it to be ice water because um, then it's roughly the same temperature as the butter. If you're putting in warm water, it's actually going to melt the butter a little, and you don't want that because that's going to make the, the crust a completely different consistency. And now is the moment of truth. I'm already afraid. Is it gonna work? No. These things never like me. Do I have it on backwards? This is like locked into place. Supposed to be going to it? Dang it! Bleeds in. This is, this is secured. The top's on. I thought I was going to save myself time, save myself labor. I have to problem solve this machine. It's really ancient. doesn't have much that could really go wrong. I don't think it is wrong. Well, that's, that's, that's in there. 
I may need to get some outside assistance. I'll be right back, folks. I did what everyone should do. I asked my mommy for help. And we discovered that putting the lid on somehow makes this beast work for you. So I'm going to try again. <laughs> it's working! Chop the butter, chop it! You better be chopping. I think it's chopping. Hmm, actually, that's, that's something pretty nice. Can I... Oh. Ooh, that's what we want to see. See what I meant when I was trying to describe it and it was like kind of like sand? I'm gonna add a little bit more ice water. Another tablespoon. Remember this all has to... Okay, two tablespoons. This all has to stick together um, when it rolls out. That's gonna be fun. All right, here we go. Nice. Whoa, whoa there, whoa there, what's happening? Okay. That ice water sure did the trick. I think that's, I think that's good. <laughs> it's starting to take on a life of its own. So now we're gonna roll it out and uh, start making the tarts. All right, now that this dragon of a machine has made my dough for me. I floured up my cutting board, which <clears throat> I uh, made in a 4-H woodworking class because our old one was putting splinters in our food. And um, I'm going to put some flour on the rolling pin. This is all to try, to try to encourage the dough not to stick onto the rolling pin or onto the cutting board. And I mean try because you can't always control it. Wow, that was... I'm really afraid to trust this because that seemed too easy once it finally worked. I'm um, just gonna kind of, what is that? It's a giant chunk of butter. I knew it was too easy. <laughs> leave that piece of the giant chunk of butter in there. And maybe I'll, I don't know, maybe I'll, I'll start with this. Because the idea here is to make berry tarts and they're like little individual pies. So I'm just gonna kind of pat it. I actually haven't done this in like 15 years, so I'm just kind of winging it. So you, uh, you roll the dough every different direction, as you can tell. And you want it to be pretty thin. I'm not going to give you a measurement, because I'm mean, and I, I, and I just don't know. Um, so there we go. Now what do you do? You add a berry to it. I'm questioning this because this is a recipe I just like, this whole thing I just made up when I was in like my late teens, um, half using a pie recipe, but um, you can see the berries have set up a bit now. I'm actually going to grab a big spoon. Where are the big spoons? This spoon's kind of giant, but I'll try it. Okay, that's weird. Clumped. Everything's weird today, folks, all right? It's because I'm under a lot of stress because Bilbo's already here. My plan was to have this ready to serve to Bilbo before he got here, but I obviously failed. I don't want Bilbo to think I'm a huge failure. All right, so I'm just gonna spoon this into the center there. I think I'm gonna end up having way more berry than I have dough, but that's okay. No, don't, please don't do this to me. Stop it, you want to stop. <laughs> it's kind of juicy. Maybe I should put some more of that instant clear gel. Alright, there we go. And now you tuck him in. Night night! Oh man. This is like the worst to have me home episode ever! Oh, this, this is not going well. This is not going well. 
Okay. This episode might need to be titled, titled How Not to Make Berry Tarts. Okay, but as you can see, in theory, you just kind of fold it in. If it didn't stick like a little jerk. Is there any way I can salvage that? Ooh, look. Maybe I can. But that's still gonna be a weak point, and as it bakes, it might just try to escape. But I'm gonna put that there. Give my hands a quick rinse. And in fact, I'm gonna wet these uh, edges a little. And, uh, excuse me, camera operator, grab a fork. Just try to get them to connect. You know, it's kind of like pancakes. The first one always turns out as a sacrifice to the gods. Oh, look at that, that jerk. It keeps coming out. Maybe I can make him a little patty cake patch. I don't know why I said patty cake. Because I'm patting it. It's like a war wound. It's oozing. You know what, that's just going to leak all over the place and that's going to be okay. <sighs> there you have it. It's a happy hobbit blackberry... I don't know what that is. <laughs> Maybe the next ones will turn out better. <laughs> it's not hard to turn out better than that, so this one's got to turn out better. <laughs> Ready? Yep. Okay, here we go. Attempt number two. Out the dough. <laughs> this is why, if you can't tell already, I'm not so into making pies. I used to be when I was little, but being the dough, you just don't get along. Hurtful things have been said, and uh, apologies need to be issued, but they aren't. Look at that, it's somehow magically thicker. Maybe I added more of the thickening stuff when the camera was off. Um, so that's a caution I should uh, should have issued is when you are using frozen berries what happens when things freeze ice crystals erupt the walls of the cells so as the berries are unthawing the juice is actually starting to leak out because like I just said it's been ruptured and that accounts for the extra juiciness this Like the second child. You know, the one you never really expected to amount to much, but instead it's, it's, it's quiet, it's creative. It loves nature, it writes books. It goes by a, a pen name that covers both of its initials. You know, it's not perfect, but it tries. It's got this Frankenstein-esque scar in the middle but it, it uh, does its best. <laughs> I have a feeling that's gonna pop open when I uh, think it. And I wasn't just talking about myself, by the way. That would be egotistical weird. I think I went overboard with the flour and now the dough's like, well, too a little too uh, dry. So I'm just getting it wet, trying to make it stick. And I have the oven preheating to 450 in the background. Oh no, 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 no. It would have been easier if I just made a pie. Oh yeah, that thickener helped a lot. That's probably as full as I should try to make it. I just keep filling them with more and more. Yeah, I could see when I used to make them, I would just do that. And then I would pinch the sides down and take my fork. Okay, this is, this is an excessive amount of flour, but you saw my trauma earlier and that's an explanation. It's not an excuse, it's just an explanation. 
this little Polly Pocket? This looks like a pot sticker. That is what I meant to make this whole time. It's just like the little houses are, I mean, look at the evolution from that mud pie to that like Frankenstein creature to this. And this is what you have to do. You gotta prick it. You gotta let some of the steam out. That's nice. See, if I if I lied to you guys and I only showed you that one, you'd be like, wow, she's such a good baker. She knows what she's doing. And then at home when you were experimenting, you'd be like, why do I suck? And you'd find out, you know, by watching this episode, you actually find out you don't suck. It's just difficult. It's just a challenge. Not necessarily difficult, it's just, you know, different than anything you're doing the rest of your life. Most of the time, unless you're a professional baker. This one's gonna be little, okay. Don't you just love my confidence? Alright. Tuck him in, smash him up. Do the dirty deed with the fork. There you go. Now I'm making it look easy. See, that's why we do trial and error on Happy Hobbit, so that I can make mistakes. I make mistakes so that you don't have to. That should be our new, like, slogan. Happy Hobbit, we make mistakes so that you don't have to. And uh, I was just telling my cousins that I, I really do think the berry juice is gonna bubble and boil over and probably coat everything else on this pan and it'll probably bake up pretty dark. And when they come out, they won't look all pretty and tidy. They'll look kind of ugly, but that's okay because I know from personal experience that even when they don't look pretty, they still taste good. In fact, they still taste amazing. And if you don't have enough of these per guest, um, you can always cut them in half because they're actually there's actually more there than than you think sometimes. All right, let's see. As you can tell, I'm not taking the time to try to roll the roll the dough into a perfect circle. I've actually never done that in my life. I don't think um, my pies usually just turn out how they turn out. And that's why you haven't seen a berry pie making episode yet. In all the millions of years we've done, how, how many years has it been? 2012? Okay, six years of Happy Hobbit. And you haven't seen that, and that's for a reason. Obviously, if I wanted, I could, like, trim the sides and make it look nicer, and you could do that at home if you have the time, but I don't have the time right now. So these are what they are, and people can appreciate that. And if they don't appreciate that, those people can make their own. One final step before you put these deforms in the oven. Um, I'm not classy, so I'm using my fingers. If you have some sort of pastry brush or whatever those things are called, you can use that. I'm just putting some milk on it. Oh, it doesn't want any milk. Flowers are repelling the milk. And this will help the crusts have a nice golden sheen in theory, but like I said, these are probably going to turn out black. Um, <laughs> and once you coat them with milk, you can sprinkle on a little bit of sugar. So there's the milk. I'm just going to sprinkle some sugar on top. Because the crust itself has no sweetener in it, and it's just to give it a nice little bit of flavor. And I'm going to put these in the oven, Smaug's mouth, for 10 minutes at 450, and drop the temperature to 350 and bake 30 to 45 minutes. 
At least that's the instructions for a pie. But since these are smaller, I'm gonna check on them after probably another 10 minutes and see what they look like. You want the crust to be a golden brown. Um, but we'll find out. Wow, these are dense. This is heavy. All right, into the oven they go. So the blackberry tarts are done. I ended up having to keep them in for probably between 30 and 40 minutes at 350. So you can see my prediction was correct. They, uh, there's a little bit of spillage, but like I said, I know from personal experience, they will still be really good. And you know, you might not go crazy and overeating the stuff that is now really chewy. It's basic, okay, it basically becomes fruit roll up. That's what that is. It's like dehydrated berry sugar paste. And it's actually not burnt, so it is still edible. But it just, it's kind of like this strange fruit roll thing. But inside, there's, there's, it'll still be good. And so you can see the two rejects actually held up pretty good and possibly better than the ones that looked like nice little dumplings. Let these cool and uh, give one to Bilbo. And uh, there's a grand reveal about Bilbo will be revealed when he eats one. Well, as you can see, I picked out what I think is the, uh, the prettiest tart of the bunch. Still looks like it's been to Mordor, but that's okay. It's all about what it tastes like, right? And uh, I thought I'd use this moment to reveal my secret about Bilbo. He's actually my uncle. Hey Bilbo, I uh, wanted to present this to you to thank you for that brownie recipe you gave Feely a while back. It was a real winner. Glad you, uh, you enjoyed it. This uh, looks, uh, it's got some leakage out here on the sides, but uh, mm -hmm. shall I give it a taste? Yeah, if, if, you, if you dare. Yeah, I'll try it out. <laughs> A little crusty, but you know, it's like that. Um, it's looking good. Mmm. Yeah. Like Tasted it? superb. Yeah. It's delicious. He said it's superb. Delicious. Delicious. Not not the looks, but the taste. Yeah. You've got it. You know, isn't that true of of everyone? It's not what's on the outside. It's, it's not what's on it's, the inside. It's the counts. villains. <laughs> It's the fillin, folks. It's the fillin. Yeah. So remember that. Delicious. Next time, next time you're making a new friend or going out on a blind date, it's the fillin. Definitely. <laughs> 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 Whoa. Should I cut? Oh yeah, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Good job, Bilbo! <laughs> That's a wrap! That's a wrap! Well, as you can see, I chose what I think is the prettiest of the blackberry tarts. And uh, I'm gonna give it to Bilbo now as a thank you for the brownie recipe. And I'm gonna reveal... Oh, hang on. Wait, sorry, we're filming. Get the blackberry juice off the cutting board. Just use a paper towel. Okay.